Oh. I like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> tell little kids is that my grandmother invented the Reese's peanut butter cup. Please don't sue me, whoever owns Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> my kids are like, really? I'm like, really? Hi, I'm Reese Witherspoon, and I'm about to take the InStyle Badass Questionnaire. I'm bad at test taking. This is going to take all day. The last book I could not put down was, oh my God, y'all. I read so many books. The Island of Missing Trees. The hardest thing about being a mother is this little piece of doubt that you're messing up all the time. I work really hard to get rid of it, but it's always there. The worst habit my kids picked up from me is chewing gum. My favorite Southern phrase is, good Lord willing in the creek don't rise. The last time someone called me Laura Jean, this morning when I talked to my mother, my current favorite artist to listen to is Tyler, the Creator. My son told me about Tyler, the Creator, and he also really likes his clothes. So then I got into the clothes and he's got great style. Something surprising that people don't know about me, I'm an excellent hip hop dancer. A badass woman is, Someone who is not afraid to let go of things that don't serve them. Someone who also understands that no is a complete sentence. Three badass women that inspire me. Um, three, I can't think, th I can think of like 43. This is gonna be really hard. Uh, Laura Dern, Oprah, uh, Zoe Kravitz, Nicole Kidman, Shailene Woodley, Carrie Washington, Jennifer Aniston, Viola Davis, Meryl, <laughs> I mean like Meryl, Gail King, Maria Shriver, should I go on? Oh, Whitney Wolfherd. Um, oh, there's so many entrepreneurs that I just find so inspiring. Sarah Blakely, I mean Cheryl Strayed, Glennon Doyle, Abby Wambach, America Ferrara, <laughs> Eva Longoria. I could go on and on. My approach to acting is less is more. When someone tells me no, I try to think of another way. The movie that made me want to become an actress was Probably broadcast news. There's a person in the newsroom who says to her, it must be hard being the smartest person in the room, and she says, it's exhausting. Or just this is great scene where she picks up the phone and just starts crying like this. <laughs> and then she like pulls herself together. Also, overboard, overboard, anything Goldie Hawn. <sighs> Goldie Hawn is gold. And I'm not going anywhere. Damn you! Man overboard! Keep going! Okay, one thing Jennifer Coolidge taught me about comedy, uh, commitment. Comedy is commitment. Just commit to the character. And, and Coolidge is just the queen of the bizarre idea. And it always works somehow. I got it. Oh. Oh. When walking up to the stage to accept my Oscar, my first thought was, this is gonna make me cry. I hope my grandma's proud of me. She was in heaven, but I was really hoping that she was proud of me. Throwing ice cream at Meryl Streep. <laughs> Throwing an ice cream at Meryl Streep was the most wicked idea I ever had. <laughs> and it was so delightful and fun, and Meryl was just um, completely game. She's so willing to play. And that's like the biggest compliment I can give to an actor, is that they just come to play. That's you, Meryl. You come to play. I threw the many, many ice cream cones at Meryl Streep, but only one hit her. <laughs> All it takes is one. You know, and also no one ever saw that scene, and I really wish they had. I think it's a classic. I should write a note to HBO. Release the scene of ice cream throwing at Meryl Streep. Okay, HBO. Uh, my goal launching Hello Sunshine was to change the narrative for women on film. 
I think that we had such a limited view of the female experience because we weren't hearing from female writers. We weren't seeing female directors working. So just kind of bundling those ideas together in one company where we talk about books, we talk about podcasts, we talk about film, we talk about television, we talk about social media. Women are having such a broad spectrum of experiences and it's so exciting to me every day I wake up so energized to see what story I'm gonna get to see or read. Oh, I know a book will make a great movie when I can imagine the movie in my mind as I'm reading it. It's actually gotta hit this sweet spot too. It has to be a great female character and she has to be in conflict within the first 30 pages that I know she's gonna overcome. If there's anything that I love so much about books is it transports me to another world and I get to imagine other people's lives. And what's more magical than that? One of the greatest experiences I had this year was walking onto the set of Where the Crawdads Sing, and every detail was there. And I thought, movies are magic. We're walking into this incredible space that all these artists contributed to, but it was because of her ideas. And that was probably one of the most special moments of my career. One major difference I learned between acting and producing is, uh, I mean, where do I start? Is this a long enough interview? There's so many differences. <laughs> acting is imaginative and focus, extreme focus, and almost tuning out the whole world. Producing is about listening to literally everyone and making sure everybody feels heard and that you grease the wheels of progress to make it happen. It's so fun and it's so exciting now to watch so many women stepping into these producerial roles and filmmaker roles and directing and leadership roles because women are natural leaders and they just know how to take care of business. So it's really an amazing time to be a creator. Rank these iconic characters in the most, oh gosh, I can't, how can you ask me to, these people are my friends. When, you, when people come up to me on the street and they say, what do you think about Elle Woods? Or what do you think Tracy Flick is doing now? I literally think people are asking me about one of my best friends. <laughs> so I couldn't tell you. I mean, June Carter Cash, God bless her soul, is just, I love one of the things she said, and I said in my Oscar speech was, I'm just trying to matter. And that has influenced my entire life. Madeline Martha McKenzie, my favorite thing that anybody ever said, one reviewer said, she was like Tony Soprano in yoga pants. <laughs> so every time I think about Madeline, I think about, yeah, she kind of was Tony Soprano in yoga pants, but kind of meaner. Um, Bradley Jackson is just a force of nature. She is a truth teller. She believes that people have the right um, to free press. And she's one of the most intense characters I've ever played, but she's so fun and funny too. I am an early riser, making people laugh, small town. I can't decide. Oh, I can't decide. <laughs> I can't decide. Tea or coffee? <laughs> coffee, lots of it, lots and lots of it. Oh, Reese's peanut butter cups. What are we talking about? I like my favorite thing to do, <laughs> tell little kids is that my grandmother invented the Reese's peanut butter cup. Please don't sue me, whoever owns Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> my kids are like, really? I'm like, really? The first word that comes to mind, well, first of all, I feel so um, tender about little Reese. Well, this was my first time at the Oscars and I just remember being so excited to be invited, just to be invited. And I couldn't believe I got to wear a fancy dress and I couldn't believe I got to sit in the front row. <laughs> I think I was the biggest fangirl there. And the next one was this beautiful Marc Jacobs dress for the Legally Blonde premiere. I just loved it, loved it. Elizabeth Stewart picked it out and I felt like a pink dream. And this was my Oscar dress, which was a 1956 Christian Dior. I mean, I felt, I felt magical. It was really special. The pink dress, this dress is Stella McCartney. And it was the first time I ever went to the Met Ball. And let me just say, if Stella McCartney invites you anywhere, you should go because she's, she's the life of the party. That's who Stella is. This last dress is Tom Ford and it was for the Oscars and it was just exquisite and beautiful. And he just does a beautiful job making a woman feel revered and celebrated. 
Rank Elwood's most iconic looks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the one that pops out to me the most is the second look where she first arrives to Harvard. And I remember Sophie Durakoff who did the clothes. She wanted her to look like a piece of luggage. So everything is leather from head to toe. <laughs> I just remember it was almost impossible to walk in because I was literally dressed as luggage. Well, I love the Jackie O moment in Legally Blonde 2. It, the pillbox hat, she's going to Washington. And of course she's really, really overdressed. But I feel like Elle Woods thinks, you know, it's best to overdress in life because you just never know who's gonna invite you someplace and you have to be prepared. And I think the courtroom outfit that Elle Woods wears in the first one is based on an Elvis jumpsuit. I'm not even lying because he's the king and she's the queen. I mean, the one where she's dressed like she goes to Harvard is maybe not, maybe not her signature look, but she was trying to blend. You were suspended in third grade for selling hair accessories out of your desk. Not suspended. So there's somewhere between true and false. I was, I held after school and I had to clean up all the desks in the entire third grade because I got paint pen all over the desks while I was trying to personalize hair barrettes for a business I had started. You were 10 years old when you landed your first movie role. False, I was 14. Come on, people. Um, you were a featured vocalist on a Michael Buble cover. That's true. I was actually on a Michael Buble album and it was really, um, actually it was super nerve wracking and I was really scared because I'm a huge Michael Buble fan and as most people who are in their right minds are. And I, he was just the loveliest person. And it was really fun. And you know, the crazy thing is, is I was on vacation this summer and I heard the song playing and I kind of freaked out. I was excited. I was like, that's me. You have made it your mission to use your voice and platform to advocate for women all over the globe. Why is it important to amplify women's stories? I think it's really important for the women who come up after me in my business that I leave Hollywood a better place than the way I found it. It was really hard to be a young actress in this business. I wasn't always respected. I wasn't always treated well. And I think to, to blow that out even further, I think we are really lucky to live in a country that we have so many fundamental rights. And to watch people rolling them back is really difficult. And I think it's really important to speak up for your rights as a woman, because you're really, um, you're empowering the next generation, but you're also helping advocate for women who have no rights in this world. So if you have a chance, lift a woman up and open a door for another woman, it will truly change the world. Thank you, that was my test. If I gave myself a grade, I'd say I got an A plus.